I've got all sorts of tools out here now because I want to talk to you about texture and some options you have for texture. So first of all, in your toolkit, um, you, it, it, depending which kit you have, you may have some of these loop tools. Um, yours are metal, not these are damn tools, but the, the end is the same. And you can fake this kind of tool. It's, a, it's called a ribbon tool, but it's also called different things. So depending where you go, you might find it called something different. But basically how this is used is to do carving. And the nice thing about it, if I can get the focus right, is you can uh, carve lines of different thickness. This works nicer than a needle tool, which leaves you a kind of rough edge. Um, the wooden tools too can be used for carving. And depending on the thickness of your wooden or your plastic tool, if you happen to have a, a kit, a set like this, that the ends are plastic, those lines can be, uh, you can essentially make different carving marks um, or different sculpting marks of different thicknesses. And so you can press and shape. I use these kinds of tools a lot for doing things like eyes and the, the wrinkles around eyes or getting up underneath the curves in a nose. Um, but of course you can use them for smoothing and you can use them for carving. Lots of, lots of detail kinds of stuff. You can, you can get in and clean up the edges of things, get underneath the edge. There's a lot of different varieties of these tools and I've got them from several different packs here. And so you can buy them at the bookstore if you don't already have a set, if you got the glaze set. Um, you can maybe fake them. Um, so if you have pieces of wood, you can sharpen them or, or carve them. Uh, you can also, if you had, uh, like a, if, if you or your children have, uh, you know, Play-Doh kit or a, a, a toy, you know, a little, little kid kit sometimes comes with tools like these. Um, you can buy them online. You can buy them at Michael's a variety of places. Um, like I said, the, the carving, uh, loop tools sometimes come in this, in a kit like that, or you can buy them separately. You can also kind of fake them by using, um, like a wire. And so I've got a few of those here, the bigger, um, oops, I can only find one. Um, but this is just made out of a piece of wood and then it has, um, I think it's a blade of a, a street sweeper, um, actually, but like a, whatever kind of metal that's fairly stiff, um, smaller metal, and you can make the smaller loop tools like, like that one. Um, some of your kits have ball styluses and, uh, rubber tip tools. Um, I happen to know that these ones are available at Michael's locally, um, but then you can buy these online. They're sometimes called sh clay shapers and they're sometimes called um, blending tools for drawing. And these are the little rubber tip tools. But if you don't have these, you know, sticks or even a, a pencil, you know, this is not a pencil, but you can see how the end, if I had cleaned it, um, would look just like a pencil tip and you can use that for, for shaping and, and things like that. So those are all kits, uh, tools, and things you can you can purchase or you might have in your kit. Um, this is another set um, of essentially dental picks and sculpture tools. These happen to be ZM, which is a little bit spendy, um, but you can find um, similar kits online or pieces of, of kits. These are pokers and scrapers and things like that. Now, I want to talk to you about some of the tools I gave you in there. So uh, one of the sets of tools I gave was basically a, a handmade version of this. This is made of wood. Um, you have clay, a clay version, um, but this is used to roll texture on the surface of uh, your clay. And so you can roll this on the surface and create a nice texture. I'm gonna kind of do everything at once on this pot. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of texture um, so that you can see it. You've also got stamps and sprigs. And so the sprigs you have are, uh, or, I'm sorry, the stamps you have have different textures. Some of them look like things. Um, some of them are just kind of abstract. This one was made from the end of a pen. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble getting it in focus. There we go. Made from the end of a pen um, where I had clicked the pen tip back. And I like doing these kinds of stamps because they can create kind of a texture, an all over texture that feels organic and natural. Um, but another thing you can use is things that are literally organic and natural. So this is a pine cone I found outside and I'm gonna roll it out. Now it's more likely to stick to my clay, um, but I can roll it onto the, the clay like that. And now I have this kind of natural texture. I was planning to attach that on here and it looks kind of like a, a stem um, once I slip and score it in place. 
Now you also have sprigs. So sprigs are the ones that are a little bit concave. Um, so they, they have a, a dent in them, a hole in them. And yours, I think I've got a bigger one here than you have. But what you basically do is you press some clay into that space. And then because this is fired clay, it'll come out pretty easily. So I'm gonna score that and then just pick it up and it brings that texture with me. So I think you have, um, you might have cats and birds, um, and then you also have some kind of organic ones that might be hard to recognize. And so those two can be used for decorating um, the surface of your, of your work. Um, you can decorate with a combination of these materials, and you can look for your own examples from the real world or from stuff you have lying around the house. So this is a big, uh, funny looking earring and it creates an interesting texture when I roll it on the on the surface there. Kids toys, sticks you find in nature, plants, etc. So lots of options for doing textures and the reason I tell you about that is because I want you all to be experimenting with texture on some of the work you're doing this week um, and so that's in your set um, but it could also be depending when you're watching this it could also be in your bowls or in your sculpture. Um, obviously pressing the textures in works fine. Um, for the eyes and the mouth, I've added coils of clay. I did that earlier. Um, I'm gonna put in some little uh, holes there um, to give this guy some expression. And then his eyelids are simply uh, done with, with coils attached over the top and you can watch there's lots of videos about how to do eyes and so i'm going to go fairly quick I, if you'd like me to direct you to how to do them um more fancily uh, i can i can do that for you um but you can create uh you know facial features and things like that if you want you can also create fur and i'm going to encourage you not to simply do one of these where's my scoring tool there it is i'm going to encourage you not to simply say look fur but to actually get in there and think about the different levels. So if I scratch on the surface like this, I get some texture and it might look a bit like uh, feathers or a bit like fur, a bit like hair. But if I get in with a variety of tools, I can start to create some more variation in depth, which we're actually gonna see in things like feather and fur and hair. Now this isn't the, the most attractive here because I'm just kind of going at it real quick. Um, but remember you have tools that within them have different kinds of, of marks that they make. And so a combination of these things and even bringing some more clay on top, um, even adding pieces of clay later on can make a more complex texture. Um, you can also make textures by dragging slip, painting slip on the surface. And so don't be afraid to play around. What's the worst thing you're gonna do? It's gonna look silly. And then you can just put some more on or scrape it off or smooth it off and try again. So I'm gonna encourage you to play around. I don't care if these are realistic, particularly not at this point, um, but I do want you to have some fun seeing what you can achieve um, with the different materials that you have there and uh, make them have some variety, make them be, be kind of interesting. So I do better working on these slower and not in front of the camera, but I am gonna continue to work on, uh, on some of these things and I'll get you some pictures to look at uh, once I get farther along. Thanks.